Hey, and welcome everyone. Um, my name is Iris von der Zwan, and today I'm going to present to you enabling pulmonary drug delivery with nanoporous particles. So before I go into the results, I would just go and uh, introduce the topic a bit. Um, so dry powder inhalers, DPIs, are used to treat diseases like CUPD and asthma. Uh, they can be used to deliver both locally and systemically. Um, but current formulation strategies, such as micronization and spray drying, are routinely used to generate particles and resp respirable size range. However, for some challenging molecules like insoluble amorphous drugs or biotherapeutics, these formulation strategies may be limited in um, optimizing the fine particle dose or providing an opportunity to influence the rate of the solution. So therefore, I would like to introduce you to nanoporous particles. So nanoporous particles, MPPs, made from amorphous silica, are being developed to encapsulate drugs for pulmonary drug delivery. Um, so you can see one of the particles here on this sand picture. They are very nicely um, spherical. Um, the size and the pore size of the particles can be carefully controlled. Uh, the drugs can be loaded up until 50%. Um, and MPPs can be used to enhance the solubility of poorly soluble compounds and offer the potential to control the release rate um, of the drugs to the lung. So the aim of the study, uh, there were two aims. Uh, the first one was to investigate the effect of different particle sizes on the dissolution profile of an encap encapsulated model drug. Um, and in this case, we had different particle sizes, but there was a fixed pore size of the particles. And the second aim was to investigate the effect of different pore sizes on the dissolution profile of a highly insoluble novel drug candidate. And in this case, the particle size was fixed. So in the pore size were different, but the particle size was uh, changing. So the materials used uh, in the different stages. So stage one is the part where we have different particle sizes. So we have three different particles, particle A, B, and C. Um, they were all loaded with budesonide, um, and the different particle sizes were ranging 2.5 micrometers to 3.5 micrometers for particle B, and then particle C had a um, size of 5.0 micrometers. And they all had a pore size of 9 nanometers. And then for the second stage, where we had the same particle size but different pore sizes, there were two different particles. Uh, they were all loaded with CMPDX, which is a, a novel drug candidate. And they had a particle size of 2.2 micrometers, and they had two different pore sizes. So particle D had the biggest pore size of 7 nanometers, and then particle E um, had a pore size of 2 nanometers. And then for the first stage, the um, experimental part looked like this. Um, so I used a modified Anderson cascade impactor to disperse the um, drugs on a filter. Um, and this one is similar to a normal ACI up until stage one. So stage zero and stage one are similar. And then instead of the normal filter stages, there are five hollow stages implemented in the ACI so that the particles had the chance to sediment on the filters. Um, so there were five hollow stages and then a filter stage below. When the um, sedimentation was done, we transferred the filters into the transport system. So for the ACI, I used a flow rate of 60 liters per minute, a suction time of 0.3 seconds, and then a sedimentation time of 20 minutes. And as I said, we use a transport system for the dissolution experiments. Um, with a simulated lung fluid, so gamble solution with a pH of 7.4. And then I analyzed the samples by UPOC UV. Um, and then um, analyzed the profiles using the variable distribution and calculated T63, T which is um, the time it took to dissolve 63% of the fraction. Um, so that we can compare the different formulations with each other. And then for the second stage, um, the stage where we had the CMPDX loaded particles with the same particle size but with different pore sizes, 
the dissolution was measure, measured using a USB2 um, in PBS with 0.2% SDS, a uh, pedal speed of 75 RPM and a bath temperature of 37 degrees. So the results for the first stage, uh, so these were the particles loaded with bedesonide and we compared the formulations with um, like standard formulation. So the uh, formulation from the turbohaler. So first I wanted to see what it, the particles looked like when they were deposited uh, using the MACI. So on uh, figure A, you see the turbohaler formulation before deposition. Uh, and then figure B, you see after the position. So you can see that the, um, this formulation is more agglomerates with smaller, um, finer particles um, together. And then when you compare it to the nanoporous particles, you can see that, so this is after dispersion on the filter stage. You can see that they are nicely dispersed and that they're not um, agglomerates compared to the other um, formulation. And then for this solution, um, so also here, there were the three particles and then compared to the normal budesonide from the turbohaler. So you can see that that one is the slowest, so the normal um, formulation. And then you, when it's in loaded into the uh, nanoporous particles, you can see that there's a difference in the solution um, rates. And what you see here is how, we have summarized it on the right. So you can see that the increase in the particle size also increases the time of the solution. And then for the second stage of the solution, so the one where we have the same particle size with different pore sizes um, loaded with CMPDX, which is a highly insoluble compound. So you can see here that CMPDX, just the drug, um, uh, dissolves like this and it has a very low total fraction that can be dissolved in the media and then when you encapsulate it into the um, for nanoporous particles you can see that um, it increases the total amount that can be dissolved in the medium so you can see that it is a lot higher than compared to the um, free uh, drug and you can see a difference in the different pore sizes so this one was the particle D was the, the particle with the biggest pore size. Um, and then particle E was the particle with the smaller pore size. And you can see that by changing the different pore sizes, you can change the dissolution profile. So you can slow it down or speed it up depending on which pore size you have. So to conclude, um, the dissolution rate of budesonide was affected by the particle size of the nanoporous particles um, with reducing particle size um, the rate of dissolution was increased. Um, the release, release rate of the drug increased also by reducing the pore size and um, also encapsulating the highly insoluble CMPDX into the nanoporous particles increased the total amount dissolved significantly. So the usage of, usage of NPP show a significant formulation advantage for drugs in development. So I'd like to end with thanking these different people that helped me during in the project um, and then thanking you for listening to my presentation.